IPL, BBL, microneedling, halo laser. How do you make sense of it all? Let's give you a really quick cheat sheet in talking about what each of these procedures are and what the benefits of each of them are. IPL, intense pulse light. It has one wavelength, it stays at the surface of your skin, and it's good for hyperpigmentation and sun damage. And what it does is it goes in there, it zaps those spots, and it gets those spots to turn dark brown and flake off. It's called a photo rejuvenation, very little downtime, and it is a very non-invasive procedure. BBL is like an IPL on steroids. So a BBL has several wavelengths of light. And what the BBL is doing is the BBL is actually going to the deepest layers of cells, the basal cells. And it's basically saying you are the base of everything. We need you to act younger as cells. We need you to do the things that younger cells would do. We need you to move faster. We need you to be a really healthy base for all the rest of the cells so that you're creating a really beautiful young ecosystem for your cell behaviors. You're gonna get that collagen impact. You're gonna get the hyperpigmentation. It's gonna address some wrinkles, but most of all, it's gonna give you that long-term impact where it's really getting to those deeper layers of cells and telling them to really act younger. Minimally invasive, you will get some redness, you will get a little bit of swelling, you might get 24 to 48 hours of downtime, and then you can resume your actives after about three days. Now let's talk about microneedling, and I did two rounds of microneedling this year. You can get microneedling with PRP, which is basically needles that go into your skin. They go from a depth of one millimeter to seven millimeters, where the at-home treatments are at about 0.5 millimeters. So it really is an invasive treatment where they're taking the needles and they are actually pressing them into your skin and creating channels so that they can actually get the PRP in there or other serums in there. So microneedling is actually intended to create those channels and create that skin damage so that the collagen is basically coming to save the day. Now, the microneedling with PRP is a wonderful procedure and it doesn't really have a lot of risks. You will have some downtime, you will have some swelling, you will have some redness, or you're going to need a few days to recover, but there aren't as many dangers associated with the microneedling and PRP. There are with the microneedling and the radiofrequency. So let's talk about microneedling with radiofrequency. I did it, I've done it twice. I will actually never do it again, and this is entirely a personal opinion. I think that it comes with a lot of risks because when you start to bring radio frequency into it, they're generating heat. So they're doing everything that they're doing from a microneedling perspective and creating those channels. And then they're taking radio frequency and they're injecting heat into your skin and under your skin. And what they're doing is they're trying to disrupt under those layers of skin so that it creates that collagen at very deep layers so you do get that lifting and that plumping. So if you have the right provider, it could be a really effective treatment. For me, the risks that the heat could be just a, a smidge too high and can actually start melting the fat just became a significant concern for me. So when you think about the Lutronic, the Morpheus 8, um, there are several name brands out there. I'm going to shy away from the microneedling RF, but you should know that it is an option for you if you're really looking for that deep collagen lifting, plumping. But again, it just the concerns and the risks for me were not worth it. Now the halo laser was an incredible process for me. It did require quite a bit of downtime. So when I really took a look at it, it took me about eight days to fully recover and I do have a video on it. But when you take a look at the change in my skin for the halo laser, that was something that really moved the dial for me. The laser is almost like having a CO2 treatment and a fractional laser and it's almost like they got married and they had a baby. What you're getting is the ablative treatment where it's actually going in and creating channels with the laser so that you almost have these like pinpoints that you can actually see as the day goes by. And then it's also resurfacing the skin. So it's incredibly invasive and the downtime is serious. So it is going to take you eight to 10 days to see that halo effect. For me, I started to see the halo effect right around day seven, but the things that it was pulling out of my skin were unbelievable. Like it really pulled out so much hyperpigmentation. It really re minimized any pore sizing. It gave me incredible texture. And over three months, you really should see some lift and thickening from it. So it really is intended to do all of the things that the other treatments do. Expect the downtime. You will get the swelling. You will get the redness. You will get the sensitivity. But I will tell you the results from the halo laser were like nothing I've ever seen before. Talk to you a little bit about these five procedures because I think sometimes it's really hard to pull apart what each of those procedures are and what is perfect for your skincare agenda. This is based on my personal experience and my personal research so you can make better decisions and ask the right questions. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.